Okay, hope you all can see my screen, huh? Okay, we are going to learn how to share the gospel effectively. Now, when I talk about sharing the gospel, first of all, the first thing that we need to understand is sharing the gospel is not just the duty of the evangelist. It's not just something that uh, your pastor should do. Okay, it is uh, the responsibility of all of us okay, to share the gospel. Okay, and this we am not I'm not talking about evangelism through the pulpit. I'm not talking about mass crusade type of evangelism. I'm talking about one-on-one -on -one personal evangelism. But first of all, before we go into the how, we need to know the why. Why should we share the gospel? Why do we need to share the gospel? Okay, um, so let's make this a little bit of in, a little bit interactive. We have um, 81 participants here. So uh, minus me, that's 80 participants. Please write in the chat box, why do you think we need to re share the gospel? Why do you think it's an important it's command box. from the Lord? Yes, please write it in the chat box. Why do you believe the Great Commission is an important command for all of us to obey? Okay, I'll give you a few minutes. Because I can teach you the how, but until you are convinced that you need to do it, then uh, I think what we are going to learn today is just going to be hate knowledge. Okay, so we need to know the reason why it's important for us to become a fisher of men. Okay, can I, I'm going to wait for a little while. Okay, I've seen one answer. Sister Marcia Chand wrote, God's command is for us to go and make disciples is, yes is christ command very true yes when the master give you a command you wouldn't think about doing anything else don't you like in the military if the commander in chief gives you a command there is only one proper answer and that is sir yes sir <laughs> so the same same thing when our chief commander has given us the command okay uh we have to do it and jesus first command when he came uh, here on earth and started his public ministry. He told his disciples, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Okay, so this is a command, not a suggestion. That's why it's called Great Commission and not the Great Suggestion. Right? Salvation, Kingdom of God. Yeah, please be a little bit more elaborate, Sister Irene Hank. Yeah, but I guess what you mean is there is only salvation into the Kingdom of God through Jesus. That is very true. Yeah, because there is no other name given under heaven by which man can be saved other than through the name of Jesus. Yeah, because only through Jesus there is salvation. What is Jesus' words? In John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Amen? To bring to the gospel to all of them and get them saved, Sister Angela. And then uh, Sister Anne said, without Jesus, there is no salvation, eternal damnation. Very true. Yeah, because hell and heaven, they are real places. Those are not some mystical places that are only in uh, novels. Okay, Hell's, Hell is a real place. And if somebody dies in their sin, and if they do not make Jesus their personal Lord and Savior, that is a place where they're going to end up for all eternity. And we have the cure Okay, to this global disease called sin. This is a much more serious disease compared to pandemic, con compared to COVID-19. And the best thing about it is we have the cure to it and it didn't cost us anything for us to share it with uh, the people all around us. And God has placed all those people around us with a purpose so that we can reach out to them, so that we can share the gospel with them, so that they can be safe as well. Okay, uh, Sister Jane wrote, Command from Christ and to save others from eternal death, okay, so that the person will be righteous and have blessings. Love God, want to make him known. Okay, God's will be done on earth as same as heaven. Okay, eternal life with our Father. We'd love to have others in God's salvation for them. Okay, thank you for your participation. I see mostly sisters. Uh, what happens to the brothers? <laughs> Okay, brothers, let's not lose out to the sisters, okay? But yes, that's the first command of Jesus. He said, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. And Jesus' last command before he was taken up to heaven 
was go and make all nations my disciples. Okay, make disciples of all nations. That was Jesus' last command. Okay, so Jesus was very consistent throughout. Okay, first of all, he said, come, follow me. I'll teach you how to become a fisher of men. And then after his disciples went through the whole apprenticeship with Jesus, then Jesus gave them this charge. Go and make disciples of all nations. Okay, and the same way that Jesus has commanded the 12 disciples to go and the 72 disciples to go, now he is commanding all of us to go and make disciples of the people all around us. God has placed you where you are, brothers and sisters, not by coincidence. You are there because there are people, there are certain people all around you, family members, acquaintances, colleagues, um, old classmates, ex-classmates, you know, all the people that God has placed around you, they are there for a reason because God wants you to reach out to them. Okay, you are able to show them the love of Christ that you yourself have received. Okay, so there is no better person to reach out to those people in your sphere of influence than you because you know them, you have built friendship with them and God wants to use every single one of you for this purpose. But there are a few principles that I would like to share with you before I share with you the how. Okay, there are a few principles that you need to understand. Okay, here's the first biblical principle. Number one is every Christian is supposed to be a witness for Christ. Okay, they are oftentimes the most strategic key for world evangelization, but also one that is most often neglected and underutilized. Why is that so? Oftentimes, when we think about evangelism, then we oftentimes think about this as the job for the pastors. Then we think that this is the job for the evangelists. Then we think that this is for those with the gifts of communication, those who have really mastered the Bible really well. What about me? Well, I'm, I'm probably a new believer. I do not know much about the Bible. Or some of you have been a believer for a long time, but you are like, I still do not know how to do it. I am not probably the best qualified person to do it. Yeah, if we have the wrong mindset, then we are not going to do the job. Okay, the task is never going to be done. Okay, there was once um, this story, okay, about four people. Uh, the first one is called somebody. Second one is called anybody. The third one is called everybody. The fourth one is called nobody. So evangelism is a job that anybody could have done, but every everybody thought that somebody could uh, somebody would have done it and end up nobody did it <laughs> so once again evangelism is something that anybody could have done but everybody thought that somebody is going to do it end up nobody does the work yeah so brothers and sisters let us not assume that some other people is going to do it okay let the bug stop with us we have to carry on the task of a great commission. Okay, we are one generation away from extinction. If we do not pass on the baton, if we do not continue to share the gospel to those people around us, then the gospel stops with us. Isn't that the most selfish thing, knowing that we have the cure to people's eternal fate, to their eternal destiny, but yet we keep it to ourselves. Okay, freely we receive freely we should receive we, we should give it out as well but there are a few reasons why people don't share the gospel now before i share the reasons why can you type in the chat box why do you think people do not share the gospel or it could be your reasons okay maybe these are some of the excuses that you've been making all this while why haven't you been sharing the good news with people all around you okay it's okay there is no right and wrong just write truthfully what is the answer Okay, what do you think is the reason why a lot of Christians do not share the gospel? In fact, according to statistics, I think about 90%, 90 to 95% of the Christians do not share their faith with others. Okay, and especially true in developing countries. Okay, why do you think people do not share their faith with others? Okay, uh, Sister Marcia wrote, fear of rejection. Yes, what about others? What do you think? People do not share the gospel. Sister Sia wrote, do not have white knowledge. Okay, do not know how to share. Lack of courage. Thank you, Sister Anna. Very good. Keep them coming. 
Any other answers that's different from what has already been uh, written? Yeah, those are all good answers. Yeah, and I concur. I agree with all of you. Okay, shy. <laughs> Witnessing with strangers is tough. A shame of the gospel. Oh, interesting. Yeah, sometimes we are ashamed of a gospel. What if after I share the gospel, this friend of mine will unfriend me? Okay, what if they would think that I'm a, I'm a weird religious fanatic and they will unfriend me? What if the relationship gets awkward afterwards? Okay, we have all these reasons, all these different reasons why we shouldn't share the gospel. And that is the reason why oftentimes Christians don't share the gospel. But some of the common reasons why Christians do not share the gospel is this. Okay. You see, when it comes to evangelism, okay, not only the, is the witness the one who is afraid of sharing the gospel, the one hearing the, the, the one who is on the recipient end, who is uh, the gospel contact, is also afraid of hearing the gospel. So both of you have something in common. Yeah? But here are some of the top reasons why Christians don't share their faith. The first one is what you have all mentioned. Fear. Fear of unknown responses. Fear of being rejected. Fear of failure. And fear of being scolded. Okay, so far, okay, if you do it correctly, based on my experience, okay, I've shared the gospel to thousands of people. God has changed my life, you know, uh, when it comes to personal evangelism. Now I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced that it's not something that's difficult. You just need to have the love for the person. You just need to depend on the holy spirit for the work because he's the one who will empower you he's the one who will give you courage yeah when you do it out of love okay you forget about you you take yourself out of a picture okay and out of my experience of sharing the gospel to so many people i've never been punched in the face i've never been unfriended because i shared the gospel with that person but later on i'm going to teach you the one key how can you share the gospel effectively and how can that person, after hearing your gospel, become an even better, good friend with you? Okay, yeah, you hear me right. After hearing you sharing the gospel, they're going to treasure you even more as a friend. Okay, if you do it right, okay, sharing the gospel could be the best thing that you do for your friends, for those people that you love and care about. Okay, so the number one reason is fear. But there is also this other reason that they do not know how to. Some of you pointed this out as well. Yes, sharing the gospel can be something that is rather confusing. Where do I start from, right? And how do I end the conversation? Uh, what should I say? Okay, uh, what is the main point of my message? Okay, how long should my message be? Okay, what scripture verses should I quote? There are all these different questions that we have in our mind. And we have no idea how to be able to share the gospel effectively in a way that could be communicated well, in a way that is clear and can be uh, clearly understood by the gospel contact, and in a way that is effective in leading this person in the saving knowledge of uh, this saving faith. Yeah, so if I can illustrate it, sharing the gospel in the past is kind of like something that is very messy. You kind of know all the pieces, you've heard sermons, about the Great Commission here and there, you kind of know what the gospel is all about. But they are like all these bits and pieces of a puzzle that are not one coherent piece. You don't see how everything fits together in one a big picture. However, what I'm going to share with you today okay, is how to put all the puzzle pieces together so that you will form this complete and systematic picture of this gospel presentation. Okay, are, you ex are you excited? If you're excited, if you want to know how, I want you to raise your hand or give me a virtual thumbs up so I know that you are still engaged. Okay, I'm going to wait for a, for a little while. Okay, let me know if you are interested how to be able to present the gospel in a complete and systematic way. Okay, great. I see a lot of people raising their hands. Great, you are in the right place. Okay, congratulations. Okay, you are going to learn a simple yet effective method how to be able to share the gospel one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not talking about preaching because preaching might not be your gift. Okay, you might not have a gift in evangelism or in communication, but I guarantee you as long as you have the heart, as long as you, have, you want to make the effort 
and you depend on the power of the Holy Spirit, you can be a very effective witness in the hands of the Lord. Okay, so um, before I carry on further with the how, I want to show you this picture of an elephant. Okay, an elephant is a smart animal. Okay, an elephant is gifted with this very sharp memory. Okay, if you do something to an elephant when they are a little child, when the elephant grows up, okay, becomes this big adult elephant, the elephant will remember it for life. Okay, so animal trainers use this fact to train the animal, to train that elephant so that it will not go around anywhere, will not wander around anywhere in the circus. What they will do is when this baby elephant is still small, they will tie its foot to this stump using this chain, as you can see in the picture. Now, because this young little elephant was still very small, it tried with all its might to break free. But the harder it tried, the, 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 the more it hurts its, its foot. And because it's very limited in strength, it was not able to break free from that chain. So after trying for a while, the little poor elephant gives up altogether. So many years have passed. Okay, what happens is, this elephant, this little elephant has grown into a big mature adult elephant. Okay, and there is something very, um, uh, very amazing that happens. The animal trainer just needs to change the size of the chain on this elephant's foot. And this elephant is going to go nowhere. Even though the elephant could have broken free very easily. Okay, because this elephant is big. It has potential to pull tons and tons of weight. What is this stump? It could have broken free from that stump easily. Okay, however, because this elephant has a very strong memory. Remember that? It's a very strong memory. And um, this elephant is going to not do anything. The moment there is a chain attached to his foot, it is going to sleep, just like in the picture. Okay, why am I telling you this? Because, brothers and sisters, there are a lot of sleeping elephants in FGA as well. Okay, many of us, not only in FGA, but in the churches of Christ. Okay, the church of Christ, there are many sleeping elephants. We oftentimes, like this elephant, we thought that at one point in time, we tried evangelism. It didn't work. We were rejected. It wasn't effective. That person didn't come to faith in Christ. And therefore, we come to the conclusion, Oh, I'm not cut for the job. Okay, this is not my cup of tea. This is not for me. Okay, it's probably not my gift. Probably you have told yourself those excuses in the past. But today, I want to wake up all the sleeping giants in this place. Okay, don't think just because you belong to the GYF community, okay, because you are well advanced in age, and you don't have like a sharp memory like the elephant. You cannot memorize the gospel. Therefore, you cannot be used by the Lord. Come on. Forget about that. I want to tell you this story, okay? There was this 86-year-old man. Okay, how many of you here? I want to see. Uh, I want to see. Let me pause my screen for a while. I want to see how many of you here are above 86 years old. If you are above 86, raise your hand. Okay, one person laden, yeah? Uh, Joyce, two person. Okay, only two out of... Only two out of 94 people are above 86, right? So this story is about this... This uh, 86-year-old man, okay? Who had never led a soul to the Lord in his entire lifetime. And he was very upset, okay? So... What he did was he went to the pastor. Okay, the pastor said, Oh, you know, um, you might not be able to do it. Okay, so the, he kept on asking the pastor to train him. But the pastor was busy. The pastor never made time for him. So in the end, he kind of like gave up. Okay, but he was thinking to himself, I'm 86 years old. I'm going to meet the Lord very soon. Okay, and I have not led a single soul to the Lord before. So one day he met with this um, president of Evangelism Explosion. His name is John Sorensen. And he told him about what his pastor told him. His pastor told him, probably, you know, you're going to waste your time. You're not going to be able to learn all this. 
Okay, it's okay because the pastor didn't want to train him. So uh, John Sorensen told him, okay, if your pastor do not want to train you, come and I will train you. Okay, and I want to tell you that you all have a very good pastor. Pastor Grace has a heart for the Great Commission. That is the reason why okay, he wants all of you to be trained in how to share the gospel. Okay, give a round of applause to Pastor Grace. Yeah, so if your pastor doesn't want to equip you in evangelism, you should look for a new church. <laughs> but I'm glad that FGA is a church that is very focused on the Great Commission. So after he has been trained, they go out for on-the-job training. And John Sorensen taught this uh, old man, uh, 86 years old, and taught him how to share the gospel by doing on-the-job training with him. To, during on-the-job training, the first time, he showed him how to do it. The second time, he involved him in the job. And then uh, the third time, he let him do it by himself. And you know what? About two weeks later, this 86-year-old gentleman came back and excitedly, okay, he told um, uh, uh, John Sorensen, he said, do you know what happened? After you have equipped me, I shared the gospel with a person using the method that you have taught me. And the first person that I shared the gospel to gave his life to Christ. And in these two weeks, not only have I led the person to the Lord, I have shared the gospel to four people. Wow, isn't that amazing? Somebody who has never shared the gospel before, who has never led a soul to the Lord before in 86 years old, just because they have spent the time to be equipped, they were able to lead souls to the Lord. How amazing is that? Yeah, so I'm sharing this so that all of you will be encouraged. All of you will be inspired. Don't think, oh, I'm old already. I can, I'm, I'm of no use for the kingdom of God. That is a lie from the enemy. Okay, I want to encourage all of you. You all have something very important to share. Okay, when, when elderly people talk, people listen. Okay, because you have so much experience in your life. You have gone through so much in life. Okay, probably many of you have eaten more salt than I've eaten rice. So when you speak, we are going to listen. And especially if you say, this is the most important message in my life. And I want you to know what is the thing that has changed my life. I want you to know the most important message that can change your life. I bet you people will listen to you. Okay, so... Please, from today onwards, do not make excuses that I'm too old. You know, I cannot be used by the Lord. Whenever you make excuses like that, remember my elephant story. Okay, the only chain that is stopping you from being used by the Lord is your mindset. It's a wrong thinking. Just like the elephant, even though you have the potential to lead souls to the Lord, you are letting the wrong thinking binding you back, holding you back. Okay, when I was doing... Um, training in China. I've seen many okay, elderly people who have joined the training as well. And you know the training in China? It's not like in a nice air-conditioned room like what we used to enjoy. Okay, they do it in a room that is hot, that is without aircon, that is packed with people. And the kind of stool that they were sitting on is the one that is without the backrest. Okay, the one without the handle. It was the plastic, plastic chair. And they sit for hours from morning all the way until night. And many of them had to travel like more than 10 hours to get to the training place because they, most of them live in the rural areas. And, and, and oftentimes, you know, you will get like 70 something years old uh, uh, people who are still attending the training. And um, I remember one of my ministry partners asked this auntie, auntie, why are you still learning how to share the gospel at this age? And you know her answer really, really touched our hearts. She said, I have granddaughters, I have children who have not known Jesus yet. And I want them to hear the gospel from myself, from me. That is the reason why I need to learn how to do it effectively. Now, brothers and sisters, maybe you, know, you have family members who are not in the Lord yet. Maybe you have friends who are not in the Lord yet. Okay, Who is the best person? to reach out to them. Well, I want you to know that the, it is you. Okay, the Lord has placed you in their life for a reason. Okay, let us not okay, waste the rest of our time. Okay, maybe we do not have 
as much uh, as many years as young people do left on this earth but let's use the remaining time that we have okay our years are counted not only yours mine is counted as well we never know when we're gonna leave the world okay my mother passed away at 53 my sister passed away at 41 in her sleep we were still chatting with her on whatsapp the night before but we didn't know the next day that it was going to be the last day that she was here on earth she she experienced a brain hemorrhage her blood vessel just erupted and she passed away in her sleep at age 41 years old okay so i take death some as something as that is very serious to me we can leave the world anytime we can check out of this world anytime we know when we check in but nobody knows when we're going to check out let us use the remaining time that we have okay to reach out to the people all around us okay we just need to love on them we don't need to be the expert when it comes to evangelism and today i'm going to share with you a simple method how you can be an agent of change okay in that person's life okay so i want you to take a moment and just think for a while who is it that the lord has placed in your lives is it a family member is it a friend okay is it your grandchildren who have not known the lord yet or maybe they are christians but they are not walking with the lord Maybe they have strayed away from the faith. Maybe some of them have backslided. Who are those people who need to hear the gospel from you? Take a moment and think about it. Because un until you personalize the reason why you need to share the gospel, even though you learn how to do it today, you are not going to use that. Okay, I've shared this uh, method many, many, many times. I've, I've equipped thousands of people but oftentimes i see that when people do not have a strong why the how to do not matter at all yeah so brothers and sisters i want to encourage all of you please get think of somebody okay after this training i want to reach out to that person okay i might be very limited in terms of my communication skills in terms of my memory okay memorizing ability but i want to holy spirit help me okay if you have a heart like that I tell you, Holy Spirit is going to use you. God is going to empower you. He's going to bring to your remembrance the things that you've already learned. Isn't that the work of the Holy Spirit? To bring to remembrance the things that we have read, the things that are uh, from the Word of God? Yeah, that is what He's going to do to you. He's going to lead you to the right person. He's going to teach you what to say. Amen? Okay, so uh, I'm going to continue on with my sharing. So there is a great potential inside the church that needs to be utilized. Do not be like the little elephant. Sorry, like the big elephant who falls asleep. Okay, all of you are giants. Okay, you are all elephants. You have great potential. You can be used by the Lord mightily. You can lead your children, your grandchildren, your friends, your, your colleagues, anyone that the Lord has placed around you. You can lead them to faith in the Lord. Okay, so that is the first principle. Very quickly, here's the second principle. It is the duty of the shepherds to equip the saints. Don't think that okay, it is the pastor's job okay, to do the work of evangelism because it is not for the work for only one expert witness. Okay, You see what happens here is the, if the boat represents the church, who do you think is the one who is rowing the boat? It's the pastor, it's the poor pastor, isn't it? That's why you see the pastor is losing hair, right? If your pastor is losing hair, that's probably because all of us keep our pastors very busy. Yeah, we are the one uh, who are like complaining and being idle, you see? Like those people on the sheep. Whereas the pastor, the poor pastor is the one who is doing all the rowing by himself or by herself. Okay, so how fast do you think this boat can go? And this is what happens in a church when the members are passive they started to grumble they started to criticize the pastors the poor pastor got criticized and let's say the pastor responded positively but rowing even faster how fast do you think this boat can go well maybe a little bit faster for a little while but i can guarantee you in the long run this pastor is going to be burnt out if he's the only one doing all the work himself so rather than that a better picture should be like this where every single member okay in the boat will be rowing together with the pastor okay this should be 
the right way. Okay, how evangelism should happen in the church. Okay, not only the pastor doing the rowing, but everybody doing the rowing together. Okay, so the first picture and the second picture, which one do you think is going to go faster? The first boat or is it the second boat? Of course, it's the second one, right? And that can only happen if all of us do the work together. Then we're going to see revival happening to GYF. We're going to have so many new members that we do not have enough space to keep them all uh, in, in the, our building. Amen? Yeah, so uh, these are just some of the things I'd like to share with you before I go into the, the how-to so that you realize okay, how much potential God has placed inside of you. You have all these life experiences inside of you that people want to listen to. You can use that okay, as, a, as, as a way, to, as a bridge okay, into people's life. And then when the door is open, you can share the greatest news that ever happened to you. Okay, so um, I hope that all of you are following so far. And now I want to share with you the four steps how to share the gospel effectively. Okay, if you have a pen and paper, do write them down. If you do not, you may take a screenshot. It's up to you. But here are the four steps how you can share the gospel effectively. Okay, the first step is called friendship. Okay, the first step is called friendship. The second step is called gospel presentation. Okay, the third step is personal commitment. And the fourth step is immediate discipleship. Effective evangelism always begin with friendship. You do not immediately give them the gospel. Why? Because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. It is during the friendship stage that they know that you care for them, that you love them, that you are sharing this from the heart, not only to get them to say the sinner's prayer, but you are doing it because you care for their soul. You know where they're heading if they do not make Jesus their personal Lord and Savior, if they do not repent from their sin. And, and therefore, you take the time to build friendship with them. Okay, then gospel presentation is the actual script. Okay, it's the actual presentation that you make. Now, does it have to be exactly this way? No, there are plenty of methods out there. But what I'm teaching you is something that's duplicable. Something that is simple, easy to remember, and something that you can pass on to others, something that you can use to disciple others to do the same. Okay, that is the power of having a framework. Okay, and I'm going to teach you very soon the five-finger method that is how, uh, that is the framework of how you can share the gospel effectively. Now, after you share the gospel, what's the next step? Well, you need to lead that person to make personal commitment. Okay, it's not Im enough just to share the gospel and leaving it at that. You need to actually lead the person to make a personal commitment to follow Jesus. Remember, we are making, com not making converts, we are making disciples. Therefore, they need to commit to follow Christ. Okay, and that leaves me with the final step, immediate discipleship. You need to learn how to immediately disciple a person that you have led to the Lord. So it's not a touch and go kind of thing. It's not just sharing the gospel, get them to say the sinner's prayer, sign on the dotted line, and you leave them at that. Okay? Uh, unfortunately, many people are good at making spiritual babies, but not very good at raising them up. Okay? So let us not repeat the same mistake. Remember, we are commanded to make disciples, not to make converts. And therefore, discipleship is very important. Okay, are you ready for the four steps? Here's the first step. Friendship building. You start by talking about life. Now, as with any other conversation, you always start with a casual conversation. Casual conversation could be anything about family, about occupation. It could be about recreation. In other words, what you do in your leisure time. Okay, do you go to the park? Do you play chess? Do you read a book? Do you travel? Do you... Um, Go for outing with your family. What do you do normally during recreation? And then uh, finally, message. What is the uh, hot uh, current news that that's, um, everybody is talking about nowadays? Okay, so you can use this method called F-O-R-M or form. Okay, family, occupation, recreation, and message to start or to get the conversation going. So from casual conversation, when you're asking people about their family, about their job, 
about what they do for leisure, about the current hot news. And then from there, you want to transition the conversation from a casual conversation to a meaningful conversation. What is a meaningful conversation? Well, meaningful conversation is conversation about life. Can you know that a person trusts you enough when they start to share with you some of the problems that they go through in life? For example, loneliness, restlessness, the emptiness in life, fear, addiction, broken family relationships, so on and so on. Okay, that is the meaningful stuff of life. When people start to share with you about the struggles that they're facing, you know that this person already trusts you enough as a friend. So building friendship is a little bit like peeling the onion, okay, layer by layer. Okay, it takes a while before you get to the core, but you need to be persistent. Okay, you need your conversation to be focused so that it doesn't stay on a shallow, casual level. Okay, you want to go deeper and deeper to the point where it gets to the meaningful things about life, where people share with you about their struggles in life, and that is when you can lead them into a spiritual conversation leading to the gospel presentation. I hope that that is clear. I hope that there is, um, there's no question. But if you have a question, do type it in the chat box so that I can address it later. Okay, this is how you can use this launch question uh, to uh, get the conversation going about life. Okay, this is how it goes. On a scale of 1 to 10, how fulfilled would you say your life is? And um, if let's say 1 is the least fulfilled, 10 means you are completely fulfilled with your life. Where are you on this scale? So people are going to tell you, oh, it's a 5, it's a 7, it's an 8, it's a 9. And then the next question you ask them is, why is it a 7? Why is it a 9? Okay? And then they're going to tell you, oh, because um, some of the possible reasons would be, I don't think that I've made my parents happy. There were some regrets in my life. There were things that I wish I, could, I, I would have done. There were certain things that I wish I could acquire or I could have so that my life could be more fulfilled, could be more complete. Whatever their answers are, it is just a conversation starter. Okay, because you want to ask them this follow-up question. If God were more a part of your life, would you say that you would live a more fulfilled life here on earth? Okay, and they can either answer you yes or no, right? Ask them why. Why is it yes? Okay, why do you think God could be a more of a part of your life? Okay, is it gonna is the number is gonna go closer to a ten or is it further away from it? So most people is gonna tell you yes. I believe that if God is more involved in my life, my life is gonna be better. It's going to get closer to a ten. Okay, and then what you can do is you can ask, you can share with them your personal testimony. Now I'm not talking about the usual personal testimony in the church that takes you half an hour to share. Okay, I'm talking about a quick three minute gospel i mean uh personal testimony okay and the format of a three minute testimony is like this you share about the before the before transformation moment means before jesus is in your life how was your life like and then what is the u-turn moment did somebody introduce jesus to you who was that person was it through a book okay that is called the bible was it through an event that you went and through that event you found out about the meaning of life. Okay, it could be anything. Okay, you share about the way how Jesus came into your life. Share it as vividly as possible. But if you are sharing with somebody from a different faith, then try to use terms that are not Christianese. Okay, do not scare the person off by speaking all this Christian lingo. Okay, just use general terms. Instead of saying Bible, just say this special book. Instead of saying pastor, you can say a trusted friend or a wise friend. Okay, instead of saying a crusade, you can say an event. Okay, and then after the U turn moment, share about your after transformation. Okay, your after transformation is the exact opposite of what happened before. If before Jesus came into your life, you were always fearful about death, then after Jesus came into your life, is there a difference there? You are no longer fearful about death. Okay, maybe before you would believe in Jesus. Maybe you were always feeling guilty. But now, after Jesus is in your life, you don't feel that sense of condemnation anymore. Maybe in the past you were a lonely person. 
but now you feel so joyful you feel this peace inside your heart okay so whatever the the life team that you have chosen okay make sure that your before is the exact opposite of the after and then you share about what happens in between that helps you to make that switch the u-turn moment okay so that is your quick three minute personal testimony now there are several diagnostic questions that you can ask okay in order to help you find out a little bit about the person's spiritual background now you can use either one of this you can use all three or you can use some of them or all of them it's completely up to you okay but i find that these questions are very effective in getting people to talk about spiritual matters con uh, uh, concerning their life okay for example the first one is like this do you believe in god okay do you believe there is god do you believe in god and then the next question you can ask is can you say that you have this close personal relationship with god okay just by this simple question you can know whether a person has a religion or a relationship with a true living god okay it's something that they either have or they do not have and from what they tell you you can learn a lot about them and then the second question that you might ask is do you believe in the afterlife you want to know what is their concept about what will happen when they die okay what do you think will happen when you die okay you can ask them okay they either have a solution to death or they do not okay and you can tell a lot about their spiritual background from the answers that they tell you and then the third possible question you can ask them is what would you say is the meaning or the purpose of your existence here on earth okay and let me tell you a lot of people do not know the meaning or the purpose why they are here on earth and that is a giveaway that that person does not have a true relationship with the savior because if you know our lord you know our savior um, the likelihood is you will know your purpose here on earth as well okay so this is how you build friendship okay in a nutshell i hope that this has been clear okay if there's any question at all please type it in the chat box i will answer them late later okay now the next thing is gospel presentation gospel presentation now does everybody remember to bring your five fingers when you leave home today or oh, i forgot that you are still at home so do you all have uh, brought your fingers with you okay let me pause my screen can i see five fingers everybody everybody can you show me your five fingers okay very good very good okay let me take a picture just to make sure that there isn't anybody without their five fingers okay good high five yeah to all of you so this five finger method is an easy okay and very powerful and very effective method how to remember the gospel okay after today there is no excuse why you wouldn't remember the five gospel points anymore okay let me teach you what are the five gospel points the thumb represents grace okay everybody repeat after me say grace uh, you do not need to unmute yourself just say grace okay grace and my index finger represents man okay man my middle finger represents god okay and my ring finger represents christ my little finger represents faith now, it's very easy very simple to remember this okay when we um stick out our, our, our thumb like that basically we are saying something is very good or something is great and we can uh, remember it this way grace is god's gift for man okay so it's a great gift from god grace okay man we use our finger in that finger to point at others right so this reminds us that man likes to blame other people for their own fault okay then god okay the middle finger is also called the great finger which um, represents the greatest being in the universe god christ christ is represented by my ring finger <coughs> excuse me so we are all the bride of christ right jesus christ is the bridegroom so we are the bride of christ it reminds us the ring finger reminds us of christ and faith faith as what the bible says okay uh, if you have faith 
as mustard seed you can move mountains okay so even uh, the the little finger reminds us that faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains okay so let us commit this to memory okay very simple grace man god christ faith let me pause my screen make sure that all of us are following along okay show me your thumb grace man god christ faith simple yeah one more time okay grace man god christ faith okay are we doing fine so far show me a thumbs up if you can remember the five points that is the first step yeah you just need to remember the five points okay now i'm going to show you how we can expand further from the two points uh, from the five points okay so there are going to be two points in each of these five main gospel points the first one is grace okay the first thing we need to remember is fulfilling an abundant life okay that is a grace of god he has created us to have this fulfilling and abundant life just now we have uh, recited john 10 10 right okay the thief comes to steal kill and to destroy but god has come the son of man comes to give us life and life abundantly so god plans to give us fulfilling and abundant life first one fulfilling abundant life second thing about grace is personal relationship with god okay by his grace god has created us so that he can have a personal relationship with god he's not some distant god he's a personal and a god who is close to us okay that is grace can we commit these two points into memory fulfilling an abundant life personal relationship with god for grace okay for men the two things for us to remember is this perfect relationship is broken and then the second thing is man's attempt to bridge this gap fail okay so first thing you need to remember about man just now we talk about this personal relationship with god but this perfect relationship is broken because of sin okay man has sinned and therefore this relationship with god is broken and the second thing we need to remember about man is man tries to bridge this gap but man's attempt to bridge the gap fails how does man attempts to bridge the gap well through various things right through religion through our good works through our high morality but none of this works okay so those are two things about man the third point is about god okay there are, and there are two sub points in god first one is god is a loving father who is seeking his missing children okay think about a father who has lost one child in the mall okay he's not gonna let go of that child and say oh i still have um four more other children at home it's okay if i lose one no he's gonna search high and low until he finds that one missing child right so god is a loving father who is constantly seeking for his missing children and what did god do in order to redeem back the children who have been lost he paid the full price for our redemption Okay, so two things about God. Okay, what, who is God? God is a loving father who seeks his missing children. What did God the Father do? He paid the full price for our redemption. Okay, those are the two points for God. And then the next point is Christ. Okay, who is Christ? Christ is God who became man. Okay, he's 100% God, but he's also 100% man. Second point about Christ is what did he do? He died on the cross and he resurrected from the dead so the second point is his death and resurrection okay so simple yeah very easy all this all these two points and finally faith okay faith first point is repent and believe okay repent and believe in the gospel second one is true saving faith what is true saving faith we need to understand what is true saving faith okay so um one more time i'm gonna go through these five uh, points and the two sub points in each very quickly and then we are going to expand on these two points again grace two points in grace is fulfilling and abundant life so i want all of you to read along with me and commit them to memory okay i know some of you are like wow this is so difficult you know why should i memorize again 
I thought I'm done with memorizing a long time ago. But just now, you know, when you were memorizing the scriptures, you gave me hope. Because I know that all of you still have a very sharp mind, right? So all of us, okay, for the sake of those people who are going to be safe through the gospel, let us commit all this to memories, okay? Grace, fulfilling an abundant life. Personal relationship with God. Man, perfect relationship is broken. And man's attempt to bridge this gap fails. Okay, then God, loving father who is seeking his missing children. Okay, what did he do? He paid the full price for our redemption. Christ, who is, God, who is Christ? God who became man, his death and resurrection. Faith, repent and believe. And second point is true saving faith. Okay, I hope that um, you have recited along with me i know i'm going a little bit fast because of time but it's okay yeah i i have recorded this and i will pass the recording to pastor grace i think they also have a recording and you can watch this over and over again at your leisure later on yeah so um practice this again and again so that you can commit them to your memory so that when the opportunity comes you'll be able to share them easily okay all right now let us make it into a, uh, a longer sentence, okay, and into a conversational kind of sentence. Okay, so God plans for us to have a fulfilling and abundant life. Okay, He wants to have a personal relationship with us. Okay, but however, God's great plan for man was disrupted when man fell into sin. Okay, one more time, let us all read this together. Okay, God plans for us to have a fulfilling and abundant life he wants to have a personal relationship with us however god's great plan for man was disrupted when man fell into sin okay so that will bring us to the next point man okay man rebelled against god and this perfect relationship with god is broken okay this is the definition of sin yeah it's basically man's rebellion against god and because of this rebellion you can see man's perfect relationship with God is broken. There is, there is a cliff. Uh, yeah, there is a cliff that is like um, separating us. There is a big gap that's separating man, sinful man, from this holy God. And man has been trying with by his own attempt, okay, to bridge this gap, whether it's through religion, whether it's through good works, whether it's through uh, good morality. But all our effort fail. Because we can never be good enough. Okay, the distance is just far too long. It's far too wide. It's never possible for us to be able to bridge that gap by ourselves. So fortunately, this is what we know about God. This is transitional sentence. So from man, we are transitioning to God. Okay, so what, what are the two things we know about man? Number one, once again, man rebelled against God. And this perfect relationship with God is broken. Man's attempts to bridge the gap fails. Okay? So fortunately, this is what we know about God. Okay, the first point about God. God is like a loving father who is seeking his missing children. Okay, and when he found the child, he will pay the full, full price for our redemption. Okay, and we know that God paid the ultimate cost. When he sacrificed his own son, Jesus Christ. Okay, very simple two points. Let us read it together. God is like a loving father who is seeking his missing children. Okay, he paid the full price for our redemption. And what is that price? God paid the ultimate cost when he sacrificed his son, Jesus Christ. Okay, are we good so far? Now we are halfway through already. Okay, let us continue on with the fourth point. Christ, Jesus is God who became man. Okay, Jesus is God who became man. What did he do? He died on the cross, rose from the dead to set us free from the bondages of sin and to reconcile us with God. So very easy. You just look at the words that I've highlighted in red and that I've underlined as well. You just remember, died, rose, set free, reconciled. Okay, can you remember those four words? Died, died, okay, 
rose, set free, and reconcile. Okay, one more time. Okay, died, rose, set free, reconcile. Okay, the rest you just fill in the blank. Jesus died on the cross. He rose from the dead to set us free from the bondages of sin and to reconcile us with God. Okay, so very, very simple, very easy to remember. All that you need to remember are the four verbs and then you can remember the whole thing. Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead to set us free from the bondages of sin. Okay, he paid for the full penalty of our sins. And he did this so that he can reconcile us back with God. So that he can mend that broken relationship between man and God. And our broken relationship with God can be reconciled through faith. Okay, so that will bring us to the next point. Which is the last point. Faith. Repent and believe in the gospel to receive the promise. Two points in faith. Yeah, Repent, the Bible says, repent and believe in the gospel okay to receive this promise okay not only just believing but you need to also turn away from your sin and turn to god that is the meaning of repentance okay and believe in the gospel so that you will receive the promise okay that's the first point second point true saving faith is trusting in jesus alone as our lord and savior okay and making a commitment to follow him Okay, true saving faith is what? Trusting in Jesus alone as our Lord and Savior and making commitment to follow Him. Okay, because true faith is followed with action. The action doesn't, I mean the work doesn't save you, but if you have true saving faith, it will be evident through your action, through your words. Okay, so after that you ask, does this all make sense to you? Okay, so two points let us remember, let us commit them to memory. Two points in faith, repent and believe in the gospel to receive the promise. Second point is, true saying faith is trusting in Jesus alone. Okay, not Jesus plus good words, not Jesus plus religion. It's Jesus alone. Trusting in Jesus alone as what? Not as our healer, not as, uh, not as the one who will provide for us, not as a miracle worker. None of those things, even though all those things are true. But we are trusting in Jesus as Lord and Savior. He is the Lord over our life. More important than Savior is He is the Lord over our life. He is the master over everything in our life. Okay, and making a commitment to follow Him. Okay, does this all make sense to you? Okay, so there you have it. Very simple. Okay, let me put everything together from the beginning again. Let me go through them from the beginning so that you know how you can share the gospel. If, let's say, you only have like five minutes and all that, you can summarize the gospel together in this way. Number one, okay, you can tell the people you, you can tell people the good news that God plans for us to have this fulfilling and abundant life with Him, and He seeks to have this personal relationship with us. However, God's great plan for man was disrupted when man fall into sin. Okay, and sin is defined as man's rebellion against God, and this perfect relationship with God is broken. Oh, all of man's attempts to bridge this gap fails. Okay, and fortunately for us, this is what we know about God. God is like a loving father who is constantly seeking for his missing children. And he paid the full price for our redemption. God actually paid the ultimate cost when he sacrificed his own son, Jesus Christ. Now, who is Jesus? Jesus is God who became man. And what did he do for us? He died on the cross. He rose from the dead to set us free from the bondages and the consequences of sin and to also reconcile us back with God. And our broken relationship with God can be reconciled through faith. Repent and believe in the gospel in order to receive the promise. True saving faith means trusting in Jesus alone as Lord and Savior and committing to follow Him. Does this all make sense to you? As simple as that, if you master this, you have mastered the basic gospel foundation. Okay, and with this, you'll be able to even lead a person to the Lord, even through the short five-minute version of uh, the gospel presentation. Okay, and uh, 
Later on, I'm going to forward to Pastor Grace uh, uh, the gospel script. Okay, if you, let's say you have more than five minutes, if let's say you want to add some illustrations, you ought to add some stories to your story to your points to make it more alive, to make it more interesting. I've created this ebook okay, that I'm going to give to all of you for free. Okay, I'm going to pass it to uh, Pastor Grace, and I believe that um, you are all in a chat group or some something. And she can forward you those ebook so that you can read it on your own. You can watch the, 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 the video that I've also embedded in the ebook. You can click on it, it will lead you to the YouTube presentation. You can learn how to share the gospel completely. Get the whole complete presentation with the illustration, with the stories, okay, from stage one all the way to stage four will take about 30 over minutes. Okay, so you can read that on, on your own. You can watch it on your own later on. Okay, but now we have completed stage two. Okay, I have a few more minutes. I'm going to teach you stage three and stage four. Stage three is when you have shared the gospel and this person is ready to make a commitment to follow Christ. These are the procedures how you are to do that. You start with a commitment question. Would you like to commit your life to Jesus and be reconciled with God today? And don't be upset if they say they are not ready. Okay, because Jesus did say that wide is the way that leads to destruction and many who are traveling down this road. But narrow is the road that leads to life and few that found this road. So it's okay if people rejected the gospel that you share because it's not you ultimately that they are rejecting. Okay, but we need to ask them this question. Would you like to commit your life to Jesus and be reconciled with God today? Okay, it starts with a willingness to be reconciled with God. Now, suppose if they are ready to make that decision, then you carry on with the second step in stage three, which is clarification of personal commitment. What, is, what does it mean to commit your life to Jesus? Well, number one, okay, this is, by the way, based on Acts 2, 38. Okay, if you remember when Peter was preaching to the crowd, the, the people were cut to the heart and they asked Peter, brother, what, what should we do? And this was Peter's response to them. Repent, be baptized for the remissions of your sins, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repentance means a change of heart. Okay? There is a turning away from sin to God. Okay? Baptism is basically about you burying the old man and you committing to a new life with Jesus. And receiving the Holy Spirit means you are walking in the Spirit, you are being empowered by the Spirit, and you are not walking in the flesh anymore. So all three are important elements of the true gospel. Okay, then after that, you can help them to say a prayer of commitment, okay, to express their heart's desire to commit their life to Christ. And after that, fourth thing is God's promises. <coughs> you can share with them some scripture verses that talk about how we have been adopted to become His children. John 1.12, right? He has given us the privilege and the rights to become children of God. As many as who have received His name, okay, who have believed in Him, He has given us the, the rights to be called children of God. Amen? That is God's promise. Okay, so this is clarification of personal commitment. Let me uh, explain it a little bit. What does repentance unto the Father means? Number one, it means surrendering our life completely to Him as the Lord over your life. So this is not just making Jesus the Savior of our life, but we are making Him the Lord over our life. Why is, why is this so important? What's the difference between the two? Well, do you know that you can commit your life to Jesus as the Savior, okay? but you will not commit your life to Him, making Him the Lord over your life? You can still live your life any way that you like. And that is not the definition of repentance. Okay? You, you, are, you are not repentant if you continue to lead a double life. Okay, so therefore, repentance means you need to turn away from sin and turning towards God. Okay, repentance in the original language means metanoia, change of mind. You need to change your mind about sin. You no longer want to enjoy it. And that, that change of mind will eventually lead to a change of heart, which will, change, uh, which, which, which will lead to a change of your action. Okay, so from the mind down to the heart, down to action. That is what repentance is all about. So you repent unto the Father, but you are baptized into Christ. Okay? 
So the second step, be baptized, is dying to your old way of living and commit to live a new life for God. Okay, so when you go into the water, you are dead with Christ. Okay, you are buried with Christ. And then when you come out of water, okay, you are living a new life with Christ. So through water baptism, you are identifying with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. This is your declaration to the world that now you are a follower of Christ. Okay, now you are no longer the old man. That old man is dead. Okay, you have buried it together with Christ. Now you are a new creation in Christ. And then the third thing is, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, why is this important? Why is it important for us to depend on the guidance and leading of the Holy Spirit? Well, because we are still living here on earth with this flesh, right? Our body is still very prone to sin. So the only way that we can be victorious over sin is if we continue to rely on the Holy Spirit, okay, so that we can walk in freedom from the power of sin. So therefore, these three things are important. Repentance, water baptism, and in filling of the Holy Spirit. Okay, then after you have led that person to make personal commitment, let's say that person is uh, agreeable with you, commit to follow Christ all the way, do not, um, do not de delay too much uh, longer for the water baptism, help them to be uh, baptized as immediately as possible, okay, help them to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and then after that, you need to disciple them immediately. Okay, it's not a touch and go kind of thing. It's not like, okay, now that this person is safe, you just ask them to come to church and you leave them at that. That is being an irresponsible spiritual parent. Yeah, but you need to become a responsible spiritual parent. This is how we do it. Okay, we lead that person how to be able to grow spiritually by themselves. The first one is the most important thing, the Word of God. Teach that person how to read and apply the Word of God. You can teach them how to read from the book of John first, one day, one chapter, and then you go through with them. Okay, the three questions you can ask, okay, to help them to study the Bible better. What does this passage teach you about God? What does this passage teach you about man? Is there anything you need to obey? See, very simple, these three questions. What does it teach you about God? What does it teach you about man? What do you need to obey? As simple as that. Anybody can learn the Bible for themselves. Anybody can grow in the faith without depending on their pastors. Okay, so reading the Word of God is paramount. It's very important. This is your upward relationship with God. Okay, the second up, upward relationship with God is your lifestyle of prayer. It's not just about reading the Word, but you need to communicate with God constantly also through prayers. Okay, so when you pray, you don't need to just pray about you know, the things that you need about or when you are in trouble, when you're going through struggle. Most people only pray during those times. But you can also pray when you are, your heart is full of thanksgiving, when you want to thank God for certain things in your life. Or when you have sin, you have slipped into sin and you want to repent, you can express to God in prayer as well. Okay, or if the Holy Spirit convict you of certain things, you can communicate and confess that sin before the Lord in prayer. The third one is in. This is your inward relationship with one another. Worship and fellowship with other believers in a small group community. Okay? You need to be a part of community because that is where your faith is going to be strengthened. That is where you are going to build each other up in the faith. And then the fourth thing is commit to join an eight-week Bible discovery journey group. Okay? Uh, one thing that I've done you know, re recently is I've started this thing called Bible discovery journey. So the believers will come together, new believers, old believers alike. We will group them. We will break them into a small, smaller breakout session. And that is where a group of three or four people in a group will share about the three questions and the passages that we have given them. What does this passage teach you about God? What does it teach you about man? What do you need to obey? And by just going through those three questions, people learn the Bible for themselves and they grow through the knowledge of the Word of God. And finally, okay, after up, in, the final one is out. Our outward outreach okay, to the world. This is where we equip the person to go and make disciples. How? By doing on-the-job training. Now that I've trained you, I've equipped you, the best way to do it is if I bring you out on the street, 
Okay, or it doesn't have to be on the street. You can go to somebody's house and you can do it live in person. Show that person how to do it. Okay, the best way to learn evangelism is by modeling it, uh, by seeing it being modeled by others. The best way to equip others on evangelism is by modeling it for them. Okay, so share the gospel, make disciples, repeat the cycle all over again. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the four steps. Okay, so very quickly, I'm going to go back again. The four steps are friendship, gospel presentation, the five-finger method I've just taught you, personal commitment, remember the three things, repentance, water baptism, in feeling of Holy Spirit, and immediate discipleship is up, upward relationship with God, inward relationship with each other, and our outreach to the community. Okay, so I hope that you have benefited. I hope that you've learned something through this uh, method. Now, I would like to pass the time back to um, Pastor Grace. I, I believe there is a question and answer session now.